Hello, ni hao. Welcome to Mentoring Mama Chit Chat by Mentoring Together, a place where two Taiwanese moms come together to share their experiences, both exciting and challenging, in raising confident bilingual children. Join us as we navigate the journey of identity exploration, code switching, overcoming resistance, and embracing the exciting moments of bilingual parenting. Get ready for laughter, moments of frustration, words of encouragement, and a sprinkle of parenting with them. I am Trista, and I am Yao Yao. Let's embark on this journey together. Hey, everyone! Welcome joining us today. Hi, everyone. This is Yao Yao. Okay, so today we're going to share with you all our stories, like how we met, how this podcast came about.、Um, Yao Yao, do you want to share how we met and how it all began? Yes, we met in the Facebook group. I think it was raising bilingual kids in Mandarin. So I had this idea, like creating a course for bilingual moms, especially raising Mandarin kids. So I went in a group, just kind of passing out information, meeting people, and I met Trista. We got on the phone because I want to get some. You know, everybody have different struggles. I know my struggles, so I just want to get on calls with different moms and see. And、that's how we met. That's how the spark began. Yes. So when Yao Yao found me, I was beyond excited because so I've taught Mandarin for eight years now, and I my husband does not speak Mandarin at all.、Um, so at home, I would say half 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 English, half Mandarin. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that、um, I haven't been really successful in raising my kids bilingual, just because it's just easier to speak English. But when I met Yao Yao, she was so determined. And passionate and just、uh, high spirited, and I was just inspired by her. So after I got off the Zoom call with her, I was like, "Can I please collaborate with you? I, you know, I have the teaching experience background, while Yao Yao has the marketing and business、um, background or knowledge, which I am lacking. So that's how this all started. Yeah, I have two kids, so my kids are a bit older, eight and ten, almost eleven. So I mean, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. When they were little, they speak Mandarin like, like pretty good. But now they're in elementary school. They have their friends, and it just now they kind of like speaking English is just much easier. I'll still like speak Mandarin, but they'll speak English back because she's like, ah,、oh, some of the Mandarin words I just don't know what to say. So、yes. it's just easier for her to respond in English. Yeah. So I understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was very compassionate. She was.、Uh, you were basically comforting me <laughs> for my、yeah. guilt, which I really appreciate it.、Uh, and like you said, yes, that's right. Because、um, actually, I was so my. I have two kids. One is almost four, and one is twenty-one months, so almost two years old.、Um, so the twenty twenty-one months old doesn't really talk just yet. But、uh, I was really surprised and shocked when my then three-year-old son told me that, "Mommy, I don't speak Chinese. I speak English." And that was a, I guess I was really surprised and shocked. First, how did he choose what language he wanted to say, right, at such a young age? And two, I don't know. I guess how to argue back in that sense, just because I am basically the only person that speaks Mandarin、um, to him, because my husband does not speak Mandarin, and where we live, we live in Ohio,、um, so not a very large.、Um, Mandarin-speaking population. So I guess there's another thing, another challenge I have, and I'm trying to. I'm sure you all out there maybe have similar challenges, and that's something that I still want to, I guess, navigate and overcome. Yeah, and since this is the first episode, I, I want to tell everybody that is why we started this podcast.、Mm-hmm. Just. Because when I was talking to Trista, and you said that kind of alone out there, I think we all need. That's why we. I want to create a community. Know that you're not alone. We're all doing this together. Let's help each other、yes. out. Sisterhood kind of、mm-hmm. thing. It could be a challenging road if you're doing this by yourself. So that's why we are. We are here. We're gonna just talk about motherhood, how to raise bilingual children, and we're both immigrants,、mm-hmm. so we can. Talk about the culture, the tradition. I mean, all that in this podcast, and do this together, right? And the identity exploration as well. Because when I first、um, talked to Yao Yao, I shared that. So we both. Well, I came to America as an exchange student in school, and I've stayed since. I was kind of moving back and forth in Taiwan, but I moved to America permanently in 2014.、Um, 
So I guess for me, I feel like in heart, I'm rooted I'm Taiwanese. I would never consider myself as American. But when I do go back to Taiwan to visit, um, I also feel disconnected just because I'm living in America. And well, all my families are back in Taiwan, but just with the culture. And I feel like I'm not up to date. So I'm just, I feel like I'm kind of in between, in the middle. And I think that's an important piece for us to, I guess, first generation, second generation immigrants to how do we I guess, preserve the culture or learn about the culture. Um, but I mean, I don't know, just navigate, like just try to find our identity and how do we, how do we find a place that we feel belong? Yeah. So my story, I came here when I was 14. Well, the reason I came to U.S. because, so I came from a broken family. My parents were never really around. They are around, but they, they just not, I, I lived with my nanny for the longest time. So I went back and lived with my dad when I was third grade. But he's just so busy. He has a business. So I just do everything I want. You know, they can't do anything about it. So I, just, yeah, I became this really bad student. When, by the time when I was 14, I skipped school. I skipped class. I was drinking. I was just a bad girl. <laughs> Rebellious, okay? So one day my dad said, okay, this is it. I don't know what to do with you. I don't want to deal with you. You're going to U.S. because I have an aunt lived in Florida. So I, at first I was like, oh, yes, I can eat, get eat all this. You know, I was just like teenage girl drama. Mm-hmm. So I watched tons of Hollywood movies. Oh, U.S., you know, it's like going to be like New York and California. I'm having so much fun. I'm ready to leave. It wasn't. What I thought, okay, I moved to Florida as a little town, it's a retirement town, so not much going on. I do not even speak a word of English because I was a bad student. I really don't study. So that's how I started. 14, moved to U.S., a little retirement town, and then kind of, I was in like a cage. <laughs> but it was good for me. That's how I started my journey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. But I don't understand. I, I know how you feel because I miss home so much. I still consider myself as Taiwanese. I feel I'm more Taiwanese than American. I feel like my Mandarin is better than English. But because of, I think more so you than me because my, my husband, he's Taiwanese and my in-laws, we go back every year, so we do speak Mandarin at home. My husband came here when he was five years old. But when we met, I just, I don't care. I start speaking Mandarin with him. So his Mandarin got a lot better because of me. For you, it's different because your husband is American. You can't just speak Mandarin to him. <laughs> he did. Uh, he took two years, I think a year or two years in college. But that just, in his words, he said he's not good. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Which so I, I appreciate his effort. And so when we first had kids, I was like, okay, so I'll be mom language and dad language, right? Like he speaks English and I was speaking Mandarin. So much it's very simple, right? But that's really not the case because I feel like when I speak Mandarin to my kids, he's excluded, right? He's we are basically isolating because in the when we're all together in the same space, if I speak Mandarin to my kids, why my husband does not know a word of Mandarin. He's almost out of the conversation, right? He is like there, but he's not, he doesn't know what's going on. So I like, okay, maybe I will speak Mandarin first and then translate it to English. But then I guess I got lazy. And then I also, another thing I saw myself doing is, so we moved to Cincinnati after we had kids and neither of our family are in this area. So we are two, the two of us and then raising two kids. And so I am. I don't say eager, but my goal is to make friends. You know, making friends um, when in, as an adult is hard, not to mention when you have small children. So I really want to branch out and then, I guess, make a community here. And by speaking Mandarin, when we go to playgrounds, it's almost isolating ourselves to ourselves, right? Like from other moms. So I, in top, like, I find myself speak English more than yeah. Mandarin. And so at home, I try to speak Mandarin as much as possible, but it's, it's just not enough. It's not enough. Because as we know, we both are English learners. Um, 
and you just have to be immersed in that environment and you really have to be dedicated. And that is one thing I'm struggling with. How can I be fully 100% dedicated to teaching my kids Mandarin in regards to, I guess, outside factors? And I, I feel like it's interesting because there are so many resources out there. I mean, you are a Mandarin teacher yourself. It's not like you are lack of any resources. And the era we live in, you can just Google anything or there's AI and resources are out there. But I feel like we're lacking like the community, you know, how like implementation, I guess. How do we do this? And we all, it's not like we're lack of resources. That's what I'm saying. And I guess a resistance from the kids as well. Like I can totally understand because I moved here, right? When I was, when I was in high school and my, I, all I wanted to do when I first moved here, like I didn't have family or friends here. I didn't know anybody. My goal then was to fit in, fit into mainstream. I want to blend. And I'm sure my kids feel the same way as well. If they speak Mandarin while nobody else around them speak it, then I don't know. Every kid is different. Some kids might feel like, oh, this is really cool. You know, I speak a language others don't speak. But a lot of times, maybe they feel self-conscious or even embarrassed. Oh, yeah. And that is one piece I think as a parent we need to recognize. But also, how do we prepare our kids better or encourage them, motivate them? Because down the road, we'll pay off. The hard work will pay, pay off. <laughs> I just thought of something what, when you are saying that. The only time, my, my daughter, she's older now. So she's like, like I said earlier, she likes to, she feels like English is eat better flow for her. The only time she'll like speak Mandarin to me, like a full, sen- full on sentence without like half English, half Mandarin. It's when she wants to say something that nobody understands. I say, see, that's good. Well, you know the language, even though I know a lot of people speak Mandarin now, so you have to be careful if you want to say something that yeah. awesome. And I, I was like, see, now we can talk secrets and nobody understands. So you need to practice more. That's funny you mentioned that because that's how we encourage speaking Mandarin more. I was like, well, if you speak Mandarin and daddy doesn't speak Mandarin, then tell yeah. secrets without daddy knowing. But. Yeah. Or maybe in a couple of years, he would actually know what secret means. I don't know if he knows the word secret, but, but yeah. So definitely like different tricks or tips on encouraging our kids. And we go back to Taiwan every year and I just, and they love it there because right. they love the food and just so fun, different scenery, so many games, so many things to do. And now it's like, that's why you have to practice your Mandarin. We went back and they're, they understand majority of it, but some, it's like, if you're not native, some words you, you just right. don't know. Like I go about, I'm fluent, but sometimes there's a new slang. I'm like, wait, that new word? I don't understand what that, what does that mean? Because <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. we're not up to date. So I told my siblings, that's my siblings are still in Taiwan. And some words they say, I'm like, what is this? Because we like slang, like was it inter- internet? Everything evolves so fast. Like it's really easy to fall yeah. out of the loop. Yeah. So back to what you said earlier, I I feel like okay when I go back, I feel I'm not up to date, you know. But when I'm here, I don't feel like I fit in one hundred percent. So I understand what you're saying earlier. Yes. Yeah. So I think this would be a really good tool. Is not just I think for this podcast, it's. It's good, like, we are also navigating in our own our own journey as well, right? Like, where we are, and as parents, what are our wishes or our goals for our children, and just learning from each other, especially as imperfect as my kids are younger, and your your kids are older, and I can almost, you're like, you're ahead of me. I can learn from your successes, or maybe failures or mistakes, right? Yeah, I think that's why I, we want to start this podcast, kind of like doing this together. Mm-hmm. Like you and I and everybody else, because and we have so much mom guilt. Sure. Like then we get pushed back. Sometimes I say, "Oh my goodness, my kids can't even communicate with my grandparents." Right? They speak like Taiwanese, okay? And they're like, "I don't understand what they're talking about." I'm like, "Oh," and I get really sad, you know. So I think that's why we're here for each other. At the end of the day, 
if they speak like broken Mandarin when they grow up or whatever, it doesn't mean like we failed, right? At least we just here in this journey together. Yes. And we just we just have to try our best. We will lay down the foundation, give them that, try our best, give them that environment. In the end of the day, we, if they don't like it, they push back or whatever it is, we just can't put that on ourselves. Yeah. I mean, as a teacher, I recognize as well, you could be an amazing teacher or good at what you do, but the students don't want to learn. They don't want to do anything. There's nothing you can do about it. Same with parenting too. We do our best and yeah. we hope for the best. But at the end of the day, the kids, they, they need to do it and want to do it. And it's not worth it for fighting about it. So we'll just have to find a way, something fun, games or music, whatever it is, and kind of incorporate that. Mm-hmm. And you know, you never know when they grow up, when we lay that foundation, who knows, they want to pick up a language, if they like Mandarin, Japanese, whatever, that's when they will go on their own and pick up that language or learn more about that culture. But at least we kind of laid that foundation. Right. When early on. Right. Or give them a healthy, I guess, the belief and value too, because I would say culture would be easier to... I guess, to teach or to pass on than language itself, because language needs more work. Um, and if yeah. they, they are curious about different cultures and they are respectful and open-minded to different cultures, okay. and that's a life skill they can take on too. Because a lot of times when I tell my students is, you know, sometimes I share with them what we do, what we eat in Taiwan, their first reaction is like, oh, that's weird. That's gross. I'm like, no, first of all, let's take a step back. Um, it is different. There are no better or worse culture. There are just different cultures. And then you don't have to like it. But it is important that you are respectful and keep an open mind. Especially nowadays, people travel, you know, like it's so easy nowadays to travel or even that you don't go out of where you live. People come to you as well. And it's really important to, for people to have the cultural competence to Right. How to navigate among different cultures and, di- you know, like diversity. And I think that's also something we can teach our kids as well. Yes. I feel like, uh, have you ever met any kids or even adult, like our generation? Maybe they're Chinese, Taiwanese, or Japanese, whatever. But they kind of deny that. Yes. Their heritage. That I'm American. So I, I, I wish my kids. They are American because they are born here. I still want them to know, hey, that that Taiwan is where we came from and grandma lives there and kind of appreciate that and not like totally deny their heritage. Right. I, I mean, they are who they are. It, it doesn't define them. Right. But, right. I mean, they have to identify themselves as different things, which is good, I guess. Yeah. Right. Like accepting or keep an open mind instead of denying it. Right. Yes, they were born and raised here and they, you know, they are American. But I guess knowing that they also have roots or families back in Taiwan, and that is a vintage, right? And that is something really cool to share about, right, to their friends as well. But yes, I totally know what you're saying about, I guess, eager to fit into the mainstream and then trying to deny the other culture. And that's some, yeah. I guess it'd be frustrating, could be defeating, but could could also be, I don't know, something we can work on. Though. I don't know. It's, it takes a lot of work for sure. Yes. Yes. That's why. Well, you kids are so young. So we start young. Starting young definitely is a good thing as well. Yeah. Well, anything else you want to talk about? I think this first episode just get um, letting you guys know our our stories, how we met and what to expect. So basically in the future episodes, we will just be just chatting our the challenges, uh, our successes or some mistakes we made along the road. And down the road, we might invite other guest speakers as well to share their stories with us. Yeah. And also since Trista and I just met, like everyone's going to get to know us. Like we are getting to know each other too. So it's fun. Yeah, I did not know Yao Yao's story on how she came to America. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure to follow us 
leave a review, follow us on Instagram. Everything will be in the show notes. We also have free resources. I'm gonna put the link in the show notes. So go ahead and go grab it. Sounds good. Well, we'll see you next time.